everybody, it's me Adele and welcome to my channel Sofa Serenity where I talk to you about my sewing journey. Welcome back if you're a regular viewer and if you're new here I hope you enjoy this vlog and consider subscribing. So in this vlog I'm here to talk to you about another wonderful challenge being ran by the lovely Ruan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl and also Gabrielle from The Cloth Edit which is a fabric store in Australia which does beautiful fabrics. Now April's challenge is called Sew April Blouse 24. And you guessed it, it's all about making a blouse. <laughs> now, so I don't tend to make loads and loads of tops. So to be fair, this was something I was excited to get involved in because I need to start making a few more separates. So this was a perfect challenge. So when Ruan approached me about doing a vlog, I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to because it's going to be great for me to do some research on different blouse patterns and get my creative juices flowing. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about in this vlog. I've got 10 patterns that I either have made or want to make that I think would be perfect sewing patterns for this challenge. Now, I'll just quickly go over the rules. You, they're very, very simple. You just make a blouse in the month of April. You can post an image of your make on Instagram using the hashtag SewAprilBlouse24. You need to follow and tag Cloth Edit and the Yorkshire Sew Girl. The challenge is open worldwide and at all level of sewists. You can enter more than once. You can post at any time in April, so you don't have to wait till the end of the month to post. And makes must be new rather than tagging in old posts. First start, I am going to be looking down every now and again because I've actually prepped for this. I've got notes copy and pasted onto a notebook and I'll be looking down as I talk to you about them so please bear with so me. So first of all what is a blouse and how is that different to a shirt? Well it's really really simple. A blouse is a term for a shirt for a woman basically. Ultimately both items are a shirt um, but we just kind of differentiate between a man and a woman with the word blouse. However in this day and age with obviously gender equality and also gender neutral clothing you know, you can buy women's patterns now that are called shirts. Um, don't get hung up so much on the word shirt versus blouse. Technically, in the world of fashion, a blouse is made for women. It's wider around the chest. It's formed for women's bodies. It's probably a bit shorter and the buttons are on the left side of the shirt as opposed to the right. Um, and obviously, shirt features for men are slightly different. So ultimately, if you found a pattern that calls it a shirt, that's fine. You can enter that. And because blouses tend to be a little bit more feminine, you will find that they have details like ruffles and um, flounces and, you know, tend to have maybe some puffs, some extra detail that gives it that fem feminine look. But don't worry, because there are some patterns that I'm going to talk about that you could class as a shirt um, or their pattern says it's a shirt but ultimately because it's for a woman it's going to be a blouse okay so now I've cleared that up hopefully that's clear as mud to you all let me talk about what I'm wearing today so I am wearing the regalia blouse this is one that I've had cut out for quite a long time but when I cut it out I cut it out and then didn't make it up and it was actually I needed to lose a bit of weight because I put on a bit of weight and now I've lost a little bit I decided to make it up for this challenge now the regalia blouse is by Sew House 7 so first of all let me talk about what I'm wearing now I am wearing the Sew House 7 regalia blouse which is an absolutely gorgeous blouse I had this cut out ages ago when I was a little bit smaller um and then ultimately came to sew it up and realised I'd put on a bit of weight and it put me off sewing it up but because I've lost a little bit of weight I decided to get this sewn up this week and I'm really really happy with it it's um the fabric that I made it in is a Merchant and Mills um block print cotton it's really soft a little bit of structure but you know it's still got that little bit of drape and um, I absolutely love it um it's got these gorgeous colours contrasting colours in it and um yeah I really really like it um it's still a little bit probably tighter than I would like it on the arms but nothing ridiculous and it does come up quite oversized as well so I did size down in this. The pattern designer describes it as a roomy fit, it's a stylish gathered blouse which makes it comfortable to wear which I can definitely say it does. It pulls on over the head and it ties at the back with a, a tie detail but you could put a button on it if you wanted to. 
It's got a back yoke and a stand-up collar. There's two lengths of sleeve. I've gone for the slightly longer length, but there's a shorter length as well. And you can go with a flowy crop term or you can go for um, a slightly longer tucked in, which is what I went for. So you can tuck it in. Um, with jeans or I like to wear mine like a tunic style and I was actually thinking you could lengthen this and make it into a dress as well it would be perfect now you also as well if you like a bit of puff which I do so I don't know why I didn't do this there are um little slightly puffy sleeves and it does talk you through how to add a little bit of tool to make that a little bit puffier which I think if I did it again I would do because I do love the bit of the poof so in respect of what fabrics you can make this out of it does recommend to use lightweight woven prints and solids um all right this is quite a lightweight cotton and i agree you obviously want something with a little bit of structure but not too much because you've got these gathers here and in the back and then obviously the poof in the sleeve you could make it in a viscose um as well um or something lighter weight but yeah i wouldn't want to i don't think you'd want to go too heavyweight with this kind of fabric with this kind of pattern now this takes around two, two to three meters of fabric depending on size so it is fairly fabric hungry i remember because this is a indian block print cotton it was a narrow fabric so i did use up every last piece but if you had a wider fabric i mean depending on your size i think you'd probably be more than two two and a half yeah i can definitely recommend this and i'll put a little picture in it's beautiful to sew the instructions are really really good the inside of it is so lovely it's obviously a yoke with a burrito method and this would be an inside that i will be happy to show anybody because it's really really well finished and because this fabric is really stable and um, it was a joy to sew so yeah my number one recommendation is the regalia blouse from sew house seven two pattern number two is another pattern that i've made and that is the bakerloo blouse by nina lee cannot try this on for you because it doesn't fit me it was made in a very very small size and it was one of the first makes that I ever made but I wanted to show it to you because although the workmanship is not the best on it um I really like the effect so I will put a picture in of me wearing it up here and I made it so let me explain it first so it's an extravagant ruffle collar and it has voluminous sleeves oh, lovely so with both, it's both a blouse and a dress, but obviously we're talking about the blouse version and it's suitable for a wide range of fabrics. You can do very lightweight fabrics or you could go even heavier. You can make it in a needle cord or a denim or something like that would look amazing. It's got a buttonhole back, closer on the back here. It's got this gorgeous frill around the front and then it's got these voluminous sleeves. Now this is quite a drapey fabric. So it's not poofy, but if you made it in more of a structured cotton, it would be absolutely wonderful. It's also got these gathered cuffs at the end and then that's got a facing as well. So what I did that I thought was quite fun on this one is I actually did a leopard print um, uh, facing here and leopard print lining for the cuff facing. And I just think that gives it a really cool pop of colour um obviously this is quite a plain silver for me which i'm not sure is the best color on me now i know my colors but i do really like it and i've been meaning to make another one of these for quite a long time um and i think it'd just be an amazing one um to make and again like i said you could make it in something that's quite bright and colorful um or quite subdued like this one or you could also make it in a thick cut a thick fabric it's just very versatile really um if you make it in a lightweight fabric obviously it'd be more summery and you can have some real fun with the collar i mean you could almost make this different as well oh there's just so many possibilities on this one it's a bias bound hem as well and um, bias bound neckline as well and you can make this as a long sleeve or a short sleeve as well and it takes depending on your size for the top it takes between i'd say oh, we've got with the short sleeve one 1.6 um up to 2.6 for the biggest size sorry no sorry for the for the for the short sleeve it's 1.6 to 1.7 and for the long sleeve it takes 1.9 to 2 meters of fabric up to the size 20 so yeah it's not too fabric hungry you'll be able to get one at um two meters of fabric for that one so that is my second recommendation for a blouse the bakerloo blouse so next let's let's talk about a seam works pattern and this is called the aims blouse and it's a romantic oversized button-up blouse with raglan sleeves and front and back gathers 
on the lined curved yoke, which is a really gorgeous detail. It features a band collar, um, elastic at the sleeves, and it's got buttons to about a third of the way down. It recommends light to medium weight woven fabric, so cotton lawn, cotton gauze, wool, chambray, swish dot, rayon chalet, linen, rayon crepe, silk, so a whole range of fabrics. Um, and it takes 1.7 to 2 metres of fabric. And I think that would be a really lovely um, pattern. And I think it would look really lovely in um, a Visco chalet. Now, I do have a fabric in mind for this one. And I, it's one I purchased quite recently. And it is this shoe fabric. How fab is that? And I just think the Ames would look absolutely brilliant in this fabric. So this is one of the ones that I think might be a contender for my entry to um the challenge what do we think now i have two meters of this fabric it's very very floaty so i think it would make those gathers gorgeous um and it's got those little gold dots on it and i think with some bright pink or fluorescent yellow buttons becky can you sort me out with some and um, then yeah this would be gorgeous let me know what you think so that is for the aims by seamwork now, for those of you that don't sign up to Seamwork, um, you can just buy the patterns one off or you can join. So you don't have to be a member to get the Ames patterns. So next is a pattern I've had my eye on for a while. I'm desperate to make the dress version, um, but it also comes in a blouse version. So I thought I'd talk to you about that one. And it's the Hazel Blouse or Dress by Veronica Tucker. She is quite a new pattern designer. And this is quite a fabric hungry pattern. It takes 2.2 to 2.5 metres of fabric for the top. And when you see the picture, you'll see what. So the hazel is an ultimate flowy, comfortable, wearable piece that you can dress up or down. It features a neck yoke, balloon sleeves and three voluminous tiers for the dress, but obviously two for the, for the top. Um, and from a fabric point of view, you could make it in a wide range of fabrics, depending on how structured you want it. But because you'd be gathering, you wouldn't want too heavyweight fabrics. But I, again, think this would be a great candidate for this fabric. Now, I don't think I'd have enough of this fabric, maybe, but maybe I would to be able to squeeze it out. I'm quite sure. So maybe I could squeeze this um, out of 2.2 uh, two metres. Um, but again, I think this would look gorgeous with the shoes as those tiers. And yeah, it would be really cute and uh, floaty little number. So, yeah. That is de that's definitely going to be used for this challenge. I just don't know which shirt. So yeah, that's the Veronica Tuckel Hazel Blouse, which is my fourth recommendation. So the next is the Everyday Top by New Craft House. Now I have made this in the dress version, but the blouse version is equally as cute. Now um, you can go for either long or short sleeves and then it's poplar, a peplum for the top. Um, it's fitted on the shoulders and it's loose through the waist and it's ultimate comfortable everyday style. Now it takes between 2.25 to 2.6 metres of fabric. Again, it is quite fabric hungry. And in respect to the fabrics that you can make for this, it suggests medium weight, non-stretch fabric, so like linen or cotton, or you could go for a drapier fabric as well. So it's quite a versatile pattern there. And I absolutely love this pattern. Now I have a couple of options um for this and one's quite out there and probably not appropriate for now but um i have this fabric which is was from rainbow fabrics which is um i don't even know what you'd call it what is this it's a see-through fabric anyway but it's like um it's like an organza or something but see-through and it's obviously got a bit more structure but still got some drape and i think that as a everyday poofy top with a peplum would look absolutely stunning so i think i've got two meters of that so i think i'd get away with it especially if i went for the short sleeve version but yeah really really like that and think it would look fabulous um with a little vest top on underneath and yeah be cute little going out top so that's that one Now, the other fabric I've got is very similar. It's like an organza fabric. It's um, got sheer, but it's a gingham. Now, I only have one and a half metres of this, so I might not be able to get it out, but I might be able to squeeze it out. Definitely not the big version, the long sleeve version, but the small sleeve version. And again, I just think that with the poofy sleeves in these colours would just be really cute for the summer. So, yeah, two options of fabric there for the everyday top. 
or blouse. Next on the list is by Mason is from Mason Fove and it's called the Mia blouse. Now I bought this predominantly because I loved the dress, but when I was doing my research, I realized you could actually do it as a blouse as well. So it combines a statement scarf collar. So there's two options. You can have a scarf collar or you can have an elegant officer's collar, which is like this, um, at the front with a plunging or slightly lower open back. So you can go for a really um, plunging back, but if you're like me and you like to wear a bra, then you can go for a slightly higher one, which I think is really great. Um, and it's really loose fitting and airy and just really, really cute. So the fabrics that it recommends for this is it says medium weight, so um, but um, that have flexibility. So viscose, tensile, silk, broader beyond glaze, um, a light and supple wool or a very, very fine denim, it says as well. So, yeah, that is um, quite a versatile um pattern as well i think i'd probably go for something quite floaty like a viscose so i'd probably say for my one it would be again my would probably go for this one for it and it takes about one and a half meters of fabric so again this would be perfect for it as long as i have, ooh, have enough fabric for it so that is the mia dress by mason fove then the next one is one that I would never have normally looked at making, but at the Stitch Festival, there was a lovely lady and I've forgotten her name. I'll put a picture up if I can find it. She was on the, on the catwalk at um, the Stitch Festival and she'd made this pattern, um, which is a sew over it pattern and it's a pussy bow blouse and she'd made it in a really nice contemporary fabric, quite structured as opposed to silky and it looked fab. So um, it, the pussy bow blouse by sew over it is a beautiful classic design, always be in style two different options. You can have a V-neck version or a keyhole opening. It's got full length sleeves with a cuff, a slightly dropped shoulder and a loose fitting bodice. Stylish and versatile, perfect for the office, but dressed up for night, it'd be great as well. Um, you can also turn it into a button up with a front yoke because there's an add-on pack. And it says in the pattern details, it says it's great for showcasing drapey fabrics, rayon, silk, crepe, lightweight fabrics with lots of drape but I don't agree with that now having seen the one that this lady had done which I'll put a picture in I think again this would be a great candidate for this fabric I mean a big pussy bow blouse with big sleeves and a, a structured tie I think would look stunning now fabric requirements on this one it says two meters two to two and a half meters now I always take so over it with a pinch of salt because they are very very um generous with how much fabric they need but you probably would do for this with the big sleeves but yeah that's another one that i think would look great in this for the pussy bow so moving on to number seven this is the mercer top by sewing and the city this is a pattern that i do actually have and it's called the mercer top by sewing in the city and the next two patterns are both from sewing in the city so this only takes 1.25 metres of fabric, which I think is great. So it's an edgy blouse that will give you a wardrobe basic in an instant style upgrade and confident boosting shoulder power. So it's designed for light to medium woven fabrics. It comes in two versions. View A is sleeveless and View B has sleeves, bracelet length, which I love. Facings finish the neckline and the keyhole back along with a single button and loop closure and narrow hem finishes the lower hem and view B sleeves. View A armholes are finished with bias tape trim. Lightweight to medium wovens with a bit of body such as cotton poplin, chambray, silk chatong, chatang, can't say that, polyester blends with tinsel. Um, so I have a few options for this. So I have this one. This is my tiger fabric, which you know I have meters and meters of, but I think how cute this would be as a Mercer. Um, Probably a short sleeve one, I think. But yeah, I think that look would really look really cute. Love it. The other option that I've got for this is this koi carp cotton poplin, which I just love. And I think that would just look fabulous with those bits of orange. I've been dying to make this up. And the more I'm holding up, the more I think actually this would be the one. Um, it only takes 1.25 of fabric and I've got one and a half of this. So, or have I got two? 
Yeah, I've got two meters of this, so that would be perfect with a little bit left over. I'll probably go for the long sleeve one in this, but yeah, I really, really like this. I think it's cute. It's size inclusive, this pattern as well. They do a curvy range as well, set, sewing in the city, um, sewing and the city. So yeah, um, or the, the more curvy of us can have access to this pattern as well. And then the next pattern is also by Sewing in the City, number nine. It's called the Minetta Top. Now, this takes one and a half metres of fabric. It's a dress or top. It's loose fitting um, with a bustier detail on the front yoke, mid-length sleeves gathered into a cuff. And then you can either have a button or this gorgeous ribbon detail on the back, which I just love. Um, and then the dress has pockets, but... Um, Light to medium weight woven fabrics such as denim, brocade, cotton poplin, cotton sateen or corduroy. So I was thinking for this, I've got this chambray which is leopard print with these gorgeous um, orange spots on it. Or I also have it in the black as well and I'm just thinking that would look gorgeous as this top. My, Minetta top. I don't know if I'm saying that wrong or right. But yeah, it takes one and a half metres of fabric and I think it would look gorgeous. The only thing that might put me off making it with this is I actually think I'd quite like to make the dress and I think I might have enough fabric to make the dress, but I could always use one of these other fabrics for the Minetta. It just wouldn't show up the probably bodice detailing. I, I would think with this sheet it'd be better in a plain or a busier um, print so that you don't break up the, the bigger prints. But yeah, this would look gorgeous, I think. Or just a plain denim chambray. I've got a plain denim somewhere, I'm sure, that I could make this in. And then my final pattern is classed as a shirt, but it's a blouse because it's for a woman. Um, is the Jenna shirt by Closet Core Patterns. And this is a brand new pattern. So it's an oversized menswear inspired shirt. Um, it ticks all the bo bo boxes, it says. It's got loose fit, drop shoulder, deep back yoke, a chest pocket, traditional shirt collar and collar stand, and a long sleeve with a classic tower, classic tower placket and cuff. A dream styling piece that pairs with just about anything. And it's got a gorgeous curved hem. And again, it could all also be. Now, it recommends light to medium weight wovens and shirtings. Um, and so for a crisp classic shirt, it's saying use structured wovens like poplin, chambray, broadcloth, dobby. Um, but for a soft day, you can choose linen, tensile, viscose, silk or satin. So there's two options really for this one. I think I could go with this and make a really floaty one. Or I have this fabric, which I think would just look a gorgeous. It would be that kind of masculine shirt, but with the fe feminine touches of a blouse. And what about this? So it's a striping cotton shirting. but It's got these pearls, which I don't know. Are these going to be a pain to sew? Um, but yeah, I just think that would look so nice as a shirt and I'd have to look at the pattern placement and everything and whether I could do it, but how gorgeous would that look? Oh yeah, very sophisticated. Now fabric wise, it takes, in the smaller size, it says 1.8 and up to um, 2.7. I think I've got two meters of that and I'd probably be in the medium large, so 2.8. Two meters would be fine i think for that so yeah and i think the picture the stock photo actually shows it in a stripe where they've done something quite clever with the stripes um on the yoke so going one way and then going the other way which i think if you could figure it out with this the beads then i think it'd be absolutely wonderful and you can take the beads off as well um if they are in the way of a seam line or something but yeah how gorgeous Okay, so that is my inspiration. So I think there was 10 patterns there. Um, hopefully there was, I think I lost count. And I hope you enjoyed them. I've tried to give you as much information as I can. Not every pattern has, has a pairing with fabric, but um, they're the fabrics that I've got in my blouse drawer, which I wanna get through. There's a couple of those fabrics as well that I've had in my stash for quite a long time. So I'd love to get them sewn up as well. Let me know what you think. What should I make? Should I make them all? Probably not. <laughs> Okay, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. If you don't already, get over and follow Ruan, the Yorkshire Sew Girl, and also Gabrielle at the Cloth Edit, and let me know what you're going to be making for Sew Blouse April 24. Now, I probably didn't mention it before, but there's absolutely loads of prizes, um, but ultimately the, the top prize is usually some money um, to spend at Cloth Edit, so yeah, they do beautiful fabrics. If you've liked the vlog, please click the like button, and if you don't subscribe already, please click the subscribe button, and I'll see you all soon. Happy sewing! Mm -hmm.